The Teen Phantom Part 21 in audio. If I would behave myself Nikki could I come along with you to see my friend, I promise I will not mention how cute you are anymore or giggle and I am sorry about teasing you about your, you know what, you are right I have been a brat. Where does your friend live? Down at the end of the trail. You have got to be kidding, you did say something about your friend Charlotte, do you mean Charlotte Chatman? Yes, do you know her too? She is my closest friend I do not believe she knows you. She just did not have a chance to tell you she has not known me very long, she even knows how I get across the high fence, she knows where the rope is that I use. You know about that too, do you? Yes I do. I just zip up the tree and run across the rope. That is why I said you should not try because you may hurt yourself, I was not just being a brat when I told you that. So you just zip up the tree and run across like a squirrel. Sort of I don't use my front paws like they do, because I don't have any and I don't need to because my balance is so good. So your balance is so good, and your friends call you lightning, well, I would think they would call you squirrely, if they saw you pull off a stunt like that. They would not call me that because it would not be respectful. No I guess it wouldn't be. I suppose you live in a hollow tree too. How did you know that? I never told you where I live, you are clever as well as cute oh no, I am sorry Nikki. I promised I would not say that again will you forgive me Nikki? Yes you are forgiven, you are the strangest little boy if you are all that good zipping up trees and as fast as lightning you would be a great friend to have, but you would be a neat friend even if you couldn't. How far is your hollow tree home? If you are not in a hurry, an hour, if you are in a hurry it will only take a half hour, I like my hollow tree home, it is really neat, I am sure you would think so too. It certainly sounds neat I would like to see it sometime, I am due at Charlotte's place right now, I am supposed to be bringing Jane her sister back down to Mellow. Come on let us go and see what Charlotte is doing. I respect you for forgiving me and letting me go with you, I really have been a brat I am sorry Nikki. That is alright no harm done you could probably be a lot of fun to have around, neither Charlotte nor I have a little brother. If I had one I would want him to be like you smart mouth and all. You think you could ride on the handlebars? Ok but I could just run along beside you. No doubt the way you hopped onto the handlebars you probably would keep up without half trying. There is no mistake about your good balance you seem as comfortable as a little bird perched on a telephone wire. You are catching on fast Nikki. I can get into places you can't too because you are so big. Is it really because I am so big? It couldn't be because you are so little, could it? You could say it that way too if it makes you feel better. No that's okay I feel good enough just being so big. If you are half as good at moving your body as you are your mouth I am sure you could make someone hurt themselves without them knowing you did anything to cause it. You are clever to know that, if they knew I would not be successful in teaching them they should not hurt people. You are a sneaky little thing. You have to be if you help anyone I even think Charlotte is sneaky. She never did tell me but then she would not be sneaky if she told me would she? No I guess she wouldn't. Are you sneaky? Yes Charlotte and I are very sneaky. We have many sneaky little secrets we do not dare tell. We three are a lot alike then are we not? Yes more than I could ever imagine. Nikki and Lightning finish their trek in silence. Lightning turned out to be quite an actor. Instead of being the little brat as he was on the trail, he is as meek as a lamb and as cuddly as a little kitten with excellent manners. Jane is crazy over him she does not want to leave him. Charlotte finds her mother and introduces lightning to her, her mother really brightens up. She is as taken in as Jane was, he is the same lovable little kitten as he was for Jane. When he is asked where he lives, he does not pull the hollow tree thing with Jane or my mother. 
He just says deep in the forest. It is hard for Charlotte to keep from laughing at that one. When Lightning and Charlotte starts to leave, her mother gives her a strange look, her mother says I need to talk to you sometime, I do not want to tell you but I know I should. You will understand, there is no hurry but you must know. When Charlotte asks her if they could talk about it on the way to church on Sunday her mother lights up with a very happy smile, would you Sasha, I don't remember you ever going to church with me. I do not remember either mom. With a big happy smile her mother says okay we will go together. I will like that very much mom. I will too, Sasha. Then Lightning and Charlotte take their leave. A little later they step into the camping gear garage as Nikki punches in the code for Jane's bike chamber. When the wall opens and exposes Jane's bike she just stands there like a statue she is captivated and in awe. No, not in my own home, Jane looks to be staring into a fog, entranced, and then she turns to Charlotte with a mischievous smile. You suppose the house will turn out to be haunted too tyke? Not unless you bring some ghosts back home with you. You girls should be running along so you will not keep Mello waiting too long, besides hours of paradise await you, Jane. Lightning and Nikki both giggle. Jane turns to Lightning with a big smile. You all are going to gang up on me are you? Lightning speaks very softly you really love this fellow Mello don't you Jane? Jane blushes, very much I really don't even know him yet. Jane goes for her bike, and she and Nikki are soon disappearing down the trail. You and Mello have truly changed our lives. You have changed ours too Charlotte. I suppose. Lightning looks at Charlotte with mischief, I really should be getting back to my hollow tree. I am sure you should. Then, as Charlotte watches Lightning, he melts into the forest. Charlotte had not planned to introduce Jim to her mother, she comes into the kitchen when Charlotte is preparing a lunch for Jim and her. Charlotte decides to let her mother face the cold hard facts here and now. She just hopes her mother does not take it too hard or give Charlotte a hard time. She tells her mother that there is a very good friend coming to pick her up to take her to Montrose to do a little shopping. Charlotte gets a nice surprise, her mother is very kind, and when she meets Jim she appears to like him very much. Her mother sees them off with a pleasant smile, she tells them to enjoy themselves. Charlotte thanks her mother realizing how much she valued and appreciated those words coming from her mother. They have a nice time shopping in Montrose and Charlotte asks Jim if he would like to spend an hour or two at the park to relax and eat their lunch. His answer is with a nice smile of thanks. The lone table they find sits Charlotte with her back to a large group, they look to be having a family reunion. Jim and Charlotte have finished their lunch and Charlotte is thinking of asking Jim if he has things he would like to talk about when he speaks. Oh no, Jim looks troubled. What's wrong Jim? I am really in trouble. Charlotte turns to look behind her where Jim is looking, she sees what looks to be a boy and his girlfriend coming their way. That is Bill, Carol's twin brother, and his girlfriend, I forgot all about the Russell reunion. Carol has been bugging me to go with her to it for the last two weeks, I never gave her an answer. I became involved with you and Mello the last few days and forgot all about getting back with her. Greetings, Jim. How are things going for you, Bill? If Carol knew you were over here with this little chick, she would be over here pulling your hair or thinking about suicide. It is not quite as it looks Bill. Oh this is just one of your little sisters is it? No, she's just a close friend, Sasha Charlotte Chatman, Charlotte, this is Bill Russell and his girlfriend, Susie Jenkins. I am pleased to meet you, Susie and you too Bill. It is my pleasure Charlotte Bill says with sincerity and emotion. Susie is shocked, troubled, or surprised and says hi. 
Bill and Susie appear to be predominantly Irish, Bill's hair is rusty color and very wavy. Susie's hair is similar to Charlotte's, a little more, red, it is wavy as well. It doesn't look dyed. I am sorry about this thing with Carol. I can fade Jim, I can spend a few hours in town, you can spend some time with Carol and meet her kin I would very much like to meet Carol first, I am not going to sit and watch her pull Jim's hair though, I can talk her out of suicide, I am not competing with Carol for Jim's love, Jim was just thoughtful enough to let me come in town with him to do a little shopping, he does not live far from my place. The reason we are out here eating our lunch is because I do not eat in restaurants. Susie studies Charlotte for a bit, you are a teen phantom fan, most of it does make sense, not eating fast food is too tough. Write and challenge the things with which you disagree. I don't really disagree I just don't like the way they say it is. What a philosophy, there are no laws or rules for life just the simple truth and facts. Search for your happiness but be sure you really find it. I would like to meet whoever it is. It's a bit confusing and cramps my lifestyle. I think Bill is hooked on that column. He is hyper about it, he thinks it is the greatest. What would you think about starting a teenage debate? I mean real public meetings, all over the country and on TV, let the youth speak out, I don't mean riots, we need to speak up for ourselves, I would like to see us debate with the politicians we would shame them into a challenge. Bill looks at Charlotte with sparkle in his eyes Jim you have found yourself a sharp chick, she has a great idea, and kids would go for that, she sounds like the teen phantom himself. Himself, how can you be so sure it is not a girl Bill? Come on Susie, let's not start arguing about that again. You know a girl doesn't know that much about boys' problems, the teen phantom seems to understand well all the flaws of the female, I do not see a girl being that honest about them. Charlotte casually speaks there has never been a claim that he does not have help and the teen phantom gets information from those who write in, even the parents, but Bill does have a point there, Susie. They are very plain spoken and honest about feminine weaknesses, it is probably a boy, of course I think it could be a girl. Bill studies Charlotte then, a suspicious look, you are right I should have thought of that, it could be someone just like you. Those eyes of yours are not working very well, where is your white cane, I am not a boy, don't let my honesty fool you. Well, it could be a girl since she would have all of that help, you certainly do not look like a boy in the least, though. How do you put up with this kid Susie, if I had no more respect for boys, than Bill has for girls, I would start courting a dolphin. Susie and Bill laugh, and Susie says Bill is just a big tease, it sounds like you can do your share too. You are certainly aware of life in our society. You do not look a day past eight but I am glad I do not have to match your wit. I have not seen you around town before. Where do you go to school? The True Christian Endeavor, but the name is changed now to the Truth and Life Academy. Yes, you are a Chatman. Bill speaks loudly and is excited. Herbert C. Chatman is the one that runs the whole show over there. I have heard they say he is terrific. Is he your father? Yes, he is my father. Do you like it better than public school, Charlotte? I have never attended public school. It will be far superior to public schools, or any other private school. We will specially select students accordingly to their spirit behavior, and positive mindset on facts and truth. We will pick 10 top students to act as the administration. Each of those students will select 10 students to work with them. It will continue down as a pyramid. In this manner, the students will govern the entire academy. There are no teachers or professors. The advanced students will reach down to help the less advanced student. It will be as a living organism maintaining and growing within itself. 
all of the curriculum will be in the master brain, accessed by the personal computer in the student's personal offices. In that way few student will need assistance.